Two bikes fight it out to be the king of cycling in a rim versus disc war. Or I've just borrowed a road disc bike and I'm going to do a few laps of Centennial Park to see which one's faster. You decide. In fact, subscribe to find out. Alright, let's do it. Fight night. What do you reckon? Will I get a job as a WWE round announcer? Probably not. Welcome back to the channel, fam. Got a good one for you today. Got a really, really good one. So you guys know that I have been railing a little bit, a little bit, against the state of the bike industry for the past couple of years. And doing this seems less about pitting like one group set against the other or one frame against the other. For me, this is all about a package because this mid to high level bike suddenly becoming well not only more expensive but <laughs> essentially less fun the way i want to structure this video is go straight into the results then we're going to deep dive into the data see if we can spot where the differences took place and finally we're going to ad lib we're going to theorize why these differences might have happened we're not going to let the truth or facts or science get in the way of that. I'm gonna go rogue and see if I can come up with why these differences might have occurred. So how are we gonna perform this very, very sophisticated scientific test? Well, like anything in Sydney, you're gonna to head to Centennial Park. And what I am gonna do is do basically two laps at a constant power on both bikes. Conditions in here are interesting actually. So I've got a 20 kilometer an hour sou'wester and it's about 12 degrees. So as a general rule, the sou'wester, even though this is a circle, believe it or not, it's a slow wind uh, in Centennial Park. I'm gonna be super structured about the position that I hold on the bike. I've got four different spots of the loop, which I'll hold four different positions on the bike. The results are in, and there is quite a difference. There's something to talk about here, but the details are that we're looking at 11 minutes 40 seconds on the rim brake bike, 11 minutes 23 on the disc brake bike. A full kilometer an hour faster on the disc brake bike. It should be mentioned that these are slow laps. It's a very windy, slow course and under 40 k's an hour, which is interesting. Okay, so the results are in. And yeah, there's obviously a headline that's pretty, pretty clear to that. But guys, before I dive deep into the data, and I wanna do that, what I want to do, like, if I just had to go purely subjectively, right, what, if anything, felt fast or felt different? For me, the answer, as I came down the hill onto the flat section and begun the sort of false flat uphill to the corner, I felt like I was holding more speed. But more than that, as I sort of started to rise up the other side, I definitely felt I was holding more speed for the same amount of effort. Whereas there felt like a drop off. Now I don't know that, I'll dive into the data to actually have a look at that, but that's, that's what it felt like subjectively on the road. So can I just give myself a massive pat on the back for riding at 302 watts both times? 302 watts, not 301, 302 watts both times. I'm pretty damn proud of that. Anyway, moving on. Um, let's let's have a bit of a deep dive into this. So what we're displaying here is in the green we have the power, in the pink we have the speed, on the left is the rim brake bike, and on the right is the disc brake bike. And two things step out to me. The first is the general less consistency of the rim brake bike. Now you can see that there was probably the highest acceleration of the, or the high speed of both efforts was on the rim brake bike. What I think is potentially more interesting is what I was actually saying on the bike. So let's have a look at, this is the section I was talking about, okay? So you come down this, this was a real headwind, real slow sort of period of the, of the lap. And you're coming down this and the speed drops off as you start to rise back up the other side into this headwind, okay? See that, see that dropping off? and then it starts to pick back up as I come back around the side with the tailwind section. Now, over here on the disc brake bike, 
you don't get as dramatic a drop off. You can see it does drop off, but it's certainly not coming down to any stretch of the imagination. If you dive right into it, you actually see that I hold a higher speed, a higher speed into this little period here. And you see that sort of replicate itself on the second lap again, where the, the drop off isn't as sharp on the disc brake bike. You can see it picking up much faster here. Look, there's clearly not one reason as to why this result happened. And I think for me, that's probably the biggest takeaway if I do have any takeaway from this, because I sort of railed in the past and probably will continue to a bit about the package that we're being offered as, as an upgraded bike, okay? And by that, I mean, you know, the full integration stuff, the wider tires, the wider wheels, the disc brakes. And I have always looked at them as individual components. And some of those componentry changes are on my rim brake bike. So I have wider tires, I have wider wheels, I have an integrated bar and stem. But I can kind of see now potentially we're nearing the tipping point where the package that you are starting to be offered is starting to surpass what the rim brake offer was. Now, that doesn't for me, that doesn't for me equate to why we're paying more. Like that's a, that's a whole other vlog we can do at some point. But as far as just pure performance goes, potentially we're on the cusp of that package, I suppose, being of benefit. The other thing that I can't stop thinking about, particularly with this bike, okay, is I would love to try it as a gravel bike. Do you know, you could potentially do that because you could put 32 mil tires on that and ride that as a gravel bike. I could never try and do that on my rim brake bike. I, I know that for a fact. So, you know, again, it comes back to this thing of, of the package potentially starting to get to the point where it's, it's a thing worth considering. Having said all that, <laughs> the Cannondale Super 6 that I had in Fresno, link down below, probably still choose it. And I have actually noticed in recent weeks that two other YouTube vloggers have done reviews or comparisons using that bike. I don't know, are we onto something here? So guys, thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to see the abuse in the comments section. Oh, he loves disc brakes now. It only took him two weeks and he loves disc brakes. Yeah, I'll cop that. I really found with the Q&A session, guys, you guys hit me up for lots of questions about what type of bike to get for a different type of rider, what would I recommend? And like I said in that, I just didn't feel like I had enough experience on different brands, different styles of bikes to offer that. I'm hoping to really change that. You need to know, you do need to know that when you read a magazine review of a bike or a component, it has been paid for by the people who put it there. I know this is not relevant to this vlog, whether I put this in or not, but that's the, that's the truth, okay? So, and, and they'll be honest about that normally, especially on websites, they will say at the bottom like how they got the bike, but just be aware of that. That said, as always, I'm happy to sell out. I've made that very clear in the past. More than happy to sell out. So just hit me up if you do want to force me to sell out. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Yeah, got some cool stuff coming up, real cool stuff coming up. and. Uh, Hopefully, Jesse Coy will be home soon, so I've got someone to shoot B-roll. All right, peace. Jesse, this is where I really miss you. I need someone to film me. <laughs> you know, there's other reasons that I miss you, you know, like friendship and all that shit, but mostly it's just the vlog content, Centennial. Hurry back.